can't wait to paint this. Gonna give it a big mustache. Oh, goodness, you scared me. What are you up to, Jeremy? I have to tell someone what is going on here. I have to try. You're not one of them, are you? Please tell me, Grace. You're not a spy, are you? Who spy? Them. The others. All of them. No, you're too innocent. I'm too innocent. I need to get this letter to my niece. She would understand. Just give it to the clerk, Mr. Waits, and he'll post it. No, he could be in on it. What if he won't post my letter? Then don't make it look like it's one of yours. Here, let me do it. Miss Emily Hartwood, Dauphin Street, New Orleans. You don't have the number? I'm not sure the postman's gonna find it without... Jeremy? Where'd he go? I'll just post it myself then. I'll just take this letter downstairs to the clerk's office myself. Uh-oh, Cassandra, I'm touching your typewriter. They're so creepy. in comparison to the foyer. Last night I dreamt that my uncle hung himself in the attic, that we were too late. The house looked different, but it was still called Dorsetto. Definitely a weird place. Feels like I've been here before, I just can't think why. 
Let's not waste any time, Detective. Yeah, you're right. Let's go get your uncle, Miss Hartwood. So, your uncle, what's wrong with him? He's possessed. As in the devil? Something like that. He says a dark man is following him, watching him at all times. What do you make of it? It's nonsense, of course, but I'd be lying if I said it didn't bother me. You see, it runs in my family. Possession? No, detective. Deteriorating melancholy. Practically every member of the Hartwood family is driven mad before they grow old. But Jeremy didn't kill himself. Is that why he's at your setup? Despite being convinced that he is truly possessed, he decided to put his last chips on Dr. Gray and his psychoanalysis. Figuring you might stumble upon some cure. You mentioned the letter. I received a disturbing letter from Jeremy accusing the staff and all the other patients of being involved in some cult. And now they are also out to get him. Could it be real? Or is it all just in his head? It's a story he tells himself, Mr. Carnby. Anything to avoid the truth. Which is? That we're all terribly insignificant. That people mean so very little to one another. That there is no one out to get Jeremy Hartwood because he isn't worth getting. Here we are. My uncle's not well, Mr. Carnby. I want to make sure he's all right. Then what's my part in this? You couldn't get a cab? I just wouldn't feel safe going alone. Did you bring a gun? Yeah. You think it'll actually come to that? No. But you might need to wave it around depending on how agreeable the staff will be. What? exactly are we gonna do when we find Jeremy? I don't know. Let's just find him first. Hello? Hello? It looks abandoned. It can't be. There has to be someone around. Wait here. I'll go around back. Thanks. What are you doing? Who are you? Whoa, pardon me, excuse me. My name is Edward Carnby, private investigator. I hope you don't mind we let ourselves inside. I do mind. This is private property. You can't just barge in here. I'm sorry about all this, but I'm looking for my uncle. It's urgent, and no one was answering the door. We can't hear you knocking anymore. None of us can. Who is your uncle, darling? Jeremy, am I right? She has that Hartwood gloom, doesn't she? That's right. I'm Emily Hartwood. 
I just came to make sure my uncle is all right. Well, he is unavailable right now. You will have to come back another day. Unavailable? How? Is he sleeping? We can wait. He's lost. Don't I know you from somewhere? Who's your man again, Miss Hartwood? My name's Edward Carnby. Private investigator. Splendid. Enough! All of you, get back to your rooms. McCarthy, keep your eyes on the child. And you two, please leave immediately. Look, we're not here to cause any trouble. Just let us see the old man, satisfy the curiosity of my client here, and we'll be off. Jeremy has gone missing. There's no need to worry, but it might be some time before he turns up. The whole staff is looking for him. What? He ran off? I don't have time for any of this. Please, come back tomorrow. All right, in that case, we'll just wait in his room. You don't mind, do you? It's upstairs, right? Wait, you can't. Don't worry, we'll be discreet. In the corridor, it's the first door on your left. I'll tell Dr. Gray you're here. Excellent, thank you, madam. Let's look around, see if we can pick up any clues. Anything important I should look out for? Did he keep a diary? Not that I know of, but it wouldn't surprise me. Quite the artist, your uncle. Paintings, sculptures. I don't know much about modern art, but he seems dedicated. Jeremy is a fairly well-known landscape painter in New Orleans. You've probably seen more of his work than you realize. We should go talk to the doctor that the housekeeper mentioned. Dr. Gray? I suppose. Let's just do a little more digging first, okay? Sure. No rush. Hey, you know anything about this? Looks like some sort of talisman. No, I don't. Oh, help me out here, will you? Kill the guy, throw some of this stuff out? I'd be crazy too if I had this much junk lying around. Save this one. All right, come on. I want to go see Dr. Gray. Come on, let's go. Yeah, I'm coming. Miss Hartwood. Emily? your store? There are no owners here. We both strangers in Jeremy's store. Jeremy did this? How? The pack with the dog, man. 
Jamba warned us, but we didn't think much of it. I'm Detective Edward Carnby. I was hired by Jeremy's niece to find him. Oh, yeah? How much you paying you? $150. <laughs> She's sure getting her money's worth tonight. Are you a thinking man, Carnby? No, not if I can help it. You know, I think Jeremy's hiding in a way we can't find him. He has this juju necklace that guides him. The talisman? That's right. It's some magic charm he got from Miss Jackson down the street. The voodoo priestess? You know surprising things, compad. Yeah, the Mama Loa. Here, take the key. I locked the gate to save her place from all the ghouls and goblins getting inside. Maybe if you go there, you can find some clues to show you the way. Thanks. I'll have a look. You want to come along? Nah, I'm gonna stay here for a while. Anything I can do for... Sorry, I didn't catch your name. Batiste. Just tell my sister Lottie I'm alright if you see her. Alright, I'm heading out. Be careful out there. I recognize this place. It's Miss Jackson's seance parlor. Let's see if she's got any information on Jeremy's talisman. exactly like the talisman Jeremy painted. I think it needs numbers, like coordinates. Maybe there's something in Jeremy's notes. It's showing something. A place? Where is that? Huh. Detective, I was wondering when you were going to show up. Mrs. Thompson told me you were here. I understand you are working for Jeremy Hartwood's niece. Uh, yeah, I guess so. I mean, you're not wrong. We came here for her uncle. I just didn't expect... I didn't expect this. You are Dr. Gray, right? That's right. You don't happen to have some identification, Detective. I'm not keen on having strangers prying into my business. Oh, Detective Edward Carnby, Decatur Street, New Orleans. Enjoying the view carré, Detective? Those old French quarters, the voodoo people, the gangsters. I'm sure you live an exciting life. Well, it's not quite like the stories, Doc. I'm just trying to make a living. Aren't we all making a living? Well, welcome to Dosetto, Detective. I hope your time here will be useful. Now, what can I do for you? Why don't you tell me where I can find Jeremy Hartwood? <laughs> Why wouldn't that make for a short visit? I wish I could tell you, but I'm afraid I don't know. A drink, Detective? Anything brandy. Oh, you do belong in the French quarters, Detective. Armagnac or cognac? You know, just give me the cheap stuff. I'm not much of a connoisseur. Having low standards is not a virtue, detective. Let me see if I can broaden your perspective. What can you tell me about Jeremy? I wouldn't want to go into details about his condition. Doctor-patient confidentiality. I'm sure you understand. Sure. But he is crazy. And he's gone missing. Why? Here, try this. Ooh, it's good. Got a bite? <laughs> it's called a sidecar. The trick is not to be afraid of the tartness of the lemon. Then for goodness sake, don't overdo the triple sec. Okay, what can you tell me about Jeremy? Ah, oh, well, let me think. He is an anxious man, constantly 
worried about events not presenting themselves according to his model of predestination. He complains about things not being carried out in the right order, and that some things simply shouldn't be. Is any of this helpful to you? Uh, not really. Uh, I was hoping for some direction where to look next. I'm sorry. I have nothing for you then. You should talk to my orderlies. They have been looking for him for a while now. I'm sure they would appreciate your help. Yeah, I ran into Batiste earlier. Come to think of it, he... He might have given me a lead. Oh, excellent. So your investigation is already underway. I'm gonna go, but I'm sure we'll meet again. Looking forward to it. Safe returns. Detective Carnby. How did you... Where did you go? I was just talking to Dr. Gray. You disappeared. No, it's not what you think. Have you... Have you found anything strange going on here? Yes. Everyone is being incredibly evasive and I can't figure out why. No, I mean something you can't explain. Paranormal, even. Detective? I really need you to get yourself together. I can't do this alone. Forget it. I'll figure it out. Do you want to come see Dr. Gray? No. I want to, I want to try something out. With his talisman, I think I can follow Jeremy to the place he mentioned in the book. What was the name? Do you remember something Spanish? T Tarawea. Yeah, that's where I need to go. Detective? Are you going to be all right? Yeah, of course. Go talk to Dr. Gray. We'll rendezvous later. If Jeremy can travel so easily, then he could be hiding anywhere, even Teruea. If he can do it, so can I. I just need to figure out how the talisman works. This must be the clock that Jeremy wrote about in the commonplace book. Huh. Looks like the plate that held the talisman in the seance room. But it's broken and missing some pieces. Yeah, uh, sorry, detective. Didn't mean to obstruct justice or anything. That's fine. You know. I'm kind of busy with my own case of a missing person. I, I was wondering if you've seen Grace, a girl about yay high. Can't say that I have. Why are you asking? Well, I'm looking for her. Is she in trouble? No, 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 no. Uh, she's just uh, hiding somewhere. We can't have a rascal like that running around unchecked at a time like this, you understand? Well, I haven't seen her. Well, let me know if you find her. I'll be around. Uh, I'll keep an eye out for your man, Jeremy. You scratch my back, detective, and I'll scratch yours.
There's a picture in the black glass. It's showing me something. It's the hallway outside Jeremy's room. Another one of Jeremy's memories. mound Jeremy talked about in his book. Don't come any closer. I'm armed. Get that thing out of my face. Who are you? What are you doing here? I'm just a detective trying to find something called Tarawea. You're after Jeremy too? Why? I'm working for his niece. She wants to make sure he's all right. He might be unharmed, but far from all right. He's a curse upon DeSetto. Oh, here we go again. What? out there. You drawing something? Nothing special. I'm just bored. Do I know you from somewhere? I remember you, Mr. Conby. From where? Don't touch that. Cassandra wouldn't like it. She wouldn't like it at all. Do you know where she is? I'd rather not talk about it. It makes me upset. 
besides, she'll be back after the Feast of St. John. You think? Yep. It's all on the page, Mr. Conby. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. All right. I'm gonna go now, if that's okay. I don't like to stay too long in the same place. Mr. McCoffey might find me. Hey. Is he mean to you? Not everyone needs to be saved, Mr. Conby. You should know that by now. Detective Conby, how good of you to come. Let me pour you a drink. What happened here? This place looks like it was hit by a bomb. <laughs> Welcome to the madhouse, detective. Thanks. Did the ceiling just collapse? I heard it was something in the attic. Something that was supposed to happen, but didn't. How that could have such consequences is beyond me. The truth is, I don't know why the room looks like this. But I bet your friend Jeremy does. You know where I could find him? Oh, somewhere in his past, I suppose. He keeps going on about that mysterious dark man. I think he is hiding from him. Or maybe he's with him. I can't really keep up. I don't worry much. Take a look around this room. You may think it looks spectacularly devastated, but I just think it's finally found its stride. <laughs> it fits perfectly with the state of this place and its... loonies. The same goes for the nonsense with Jeremy. In my eyes, we finally managed to match the wild ride inside all of us. Well, I'm happy you find the evening so harmonious. I, uh... Hope you don't mind me setting things right. Jeremy's business, that is. This room looks beyond my capabilities. Good luck, detective. Hope to see you again soon. Yeah. Evening, miss. Can I get some more of that whiskey? Go ahead, detective. I don't think I can stomach any more anyway. Am I bothering you? On the contrary, detective. I enjoy watching professionals at work. Well, I better get going. Bye now, detective. Don't take any wooden nickels. Jeremy? Where's the body? Black glass is showing another room. Must be a way to another one of Jeremy's memories. I knew it. I knew it would work. You're getting good at this, Carnby. Maybe a little too good at this. The Hartwoods family crypt. Emily's family must have deeper roots in New Orleans than I thought. I figured she was a Yankee like me.
Please don't touch her. Jeremy. What are you doing here? Everyone's looking for you. I know. It, it's all a big mess. No one understands. I, I'm just trying to keep evil at bay. Just for a little while longer. You've got to come back with me. Your niece is waiting at Dorsetto. Emily? Why would you... My letter. But keep making it worse. What is going on, Jeremy? How is any of this happening? I made... I made a terrible promise with some... The Dark Man. Who is he? No, 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 don't say his name. He can hear us. He's always listening. Jeremy, I need to understand what is going on. I promised him everything. When the sun rises, I will be chained in his sunken desert temple for an eternity. At least the evil about to awaken and to settle won't harm anyone outside of that cursed place. You're acting crazy, Jeremy. I want to help. There's nothing you can do. Then what's all the business about Teruea? Why did you want to go there? I can't go there. I'm not allowed. But you wanted to. Can I go? Tell me, will it help me to break your pact? Is there something there that would help? Why would you give me hope? That's so cruel. Okay. Sounds like we're onto something here. What should Look I- Look out! Behind you! Run! Don't let him take you! I've seen so many strange occurrences lately. Memories explode into existence and then burn out like tide glass bulb filaments. Dreamscapes crash down from the stars and sink into the sea. Doors that lead to nowhere and absolutely everywhere at once. With all this reverie, I want to think there's a chance that you found a way to remain alive in some way I cannot fathom. Just like I've learned to navigate with my talisman, maybe you with all your knowledge you somehow knew a way, the way to find me again, perhaps in Teruaya. Oh, my love, Jeremy. Whoa, what's going on? It's dialing in something all on its own and it's showing the way to another memory? Where is that? I'm glad to see you made it. I had my doubts, but the hope you instilled has yet abandoned me. I guess this must be Tarawea. Who are you? My name is Juan Luis Jorge, and this is indeed the convent of Tarawea. You'll have to excuse me, but Jeremy never got your name. The name's Edward Carnby. I'm a private investigator. You're not a patient, are you? No. I'm the author of a book that Yermi once found important. How does that work? Are you part of this memory as well? Is this even a memory? I think calling me a manifestation of Yermi's subconscious would be more correct. And so is the convent of Taroeya. I'm a man Yermi has never met. And we are in a place that he has never been. Okay. So are you here to guide me or something? I have no more purpose than you do. I simply am. I will happily help you, of course, if I'm able. If you are already somehow part of Jeremy, why did he want to come here? 
Isn't he sort of here already? Jeremy wanted to come here because it's a representation of his mind at peace. When Dr. Gray asks him to find his focus during his sessions, this far-flung convent is what Jeremy imagines. He is under the impression that if he could physically come here, he would reach a perfect equanimity. A spiritual apotheosis. You don't think it would work? Jeremy subconsciously knows it's just wishful thinking. He can't come here. Despite the pathways opened by the dark man between their seto and Jeremy's psyche, it's simply not possible. But I'm here. <laughs> Indeed. It's a shame it's just another place for you, detective. Otherwise, you could have become a Buddha. Always a bridesmaid, never a blushing bride. Am I right? <laughs> yes, I suppose so. You'll have to chase enlightenment elsewhere. So what's the next best thing? What can I do here? You should seek out the convent library and try to find the truth about Yermi's relationship with the Dark Man. It's the sort of knowledge he represses and is unable to reflect on. Will it tell me how to break the pact? Perhaps. At least you'll have something to confront Yermi with. Wait, why can't you just tell me? I don't know such things. You'd be better off consulting the text of Dr. Freud if you want such answers. <laughs> no thanks, I hate shrinks. There is another thing you should know about the library. He is here as well. The Dark Man has been working his way through the text for a long, long time. He's here? How am I supposed to get past him? Be careful, detective. Oh, jeez, just perfect. You have any advice on how to deal with the dark man? Hmm. I suppose suppression could work. Try not to pay him any attention. I know you said Jeremy's never been here, but does this place exist in real life? I think it's supposed to be Mexico. But I am not certain of that away as origin. Well, good to meet you, Juan. I'm going in. May the gods be with you. Edward de Vilban. The great library was endless, beautiful, and terrible. An Akashic record for the universe inside the mind of Jeremy Hartwood. Now corrupted by a story forced upon him, told by a maniacal liar, an evil. Conjured by science and secrecy. I will suspend a room and lock away the foundation of his character. Its key will be left to the librarian, the only thing invisible to the Frowler. that I went through the night with the restless crowds. He was a kind of itinerant showman who held forth in public halls and aroused widespread fear. The New Orleans address of the event is lost, but I remember distinctly the Prext shipping company pressing their contribution. Hey. Oh, <laughs> 
ว่าจะเป็นเรื่องต้องมีเรื่องต้องตกพี่เทจิตวอนวอนTell me what this is all about. Welcome, detective, to the greatest show this side of the Mississippi. Now, the hotel, the Black Pharaoh, 
the ancient magician who lived a thousand lives and wore a thousand masks. I can see why you settled on calling him the Dark Man. Saves your breath. So you got scared by a stage magician, and now he's living inside your head. You can mock me, Detective. But you would be the crazy one to think his presence can be ignored. Look where we are! We didn't get to finish our last conversation, did we? You were about to tell me how to break the contract with the Dark Man. No, we can't. We would turn on loose on the world. So many innocent would die. But there is a way to break out of the deal. There is. You offered me a way out. Steps to take. What are they? You'll never find them. They're forever entombed in his sunken desert temple. Jeremy, I'm not your enemy. Tell me where to go. How do I find the temple? No, we can't. I have to make this sacrifice. God damn it, Jeremy. I'm gonna save you. Don't worry. sunken desert temple. I better get down there. Acknowledge psychological trauma, break through barriers of self-deceit, temperamentic behavior. These are the dark man's terms. The contract. Huh? What are you doing? Oh, I found something. Great. Was it alcohol? God, no. I just got the wind knocked out of me. I think I know how to break the contract with the Dark Man. What exactly does that mean? Everything going back to normal. Uh, all right. Uh, I found some more information on Dorsetto and the patients. There are some seriously strange things going on here. 
I'm pretty sure two of the patients are dead and maybe even the clerk. Oh, yeah. I kind of just gave up on worrying about that. Well, just keep your eyes open, I suppose. What were you doing again? Jeremy made a pact with the Dark Man to keep all the madness locked inside Dorsetto. All right. I'm gonna break it. I just have to... Where is it? Where's the talisman? It's around your neck. Ah! Oh. Ah! Oh. I worry, detective. Don't. I'm fine. I worry that you're not much help on this case. But at least you're a good distraction. Trust me. You're getting your money's worth. At this rate, I'm an absolute bargain. Combe never thought he'd be so happy to be back at the Seto. It felt like he had crawled through a long, dark tunnel of misery and regret. Now that he was back, Combe could look into the steps mentioned in the contract. But there was one thing that gnawed on him. What exactly did this have to do with Dr. Gray? Oh, got to be around here somewhere. He wouldn't leave this house. I don't know what to think anymore. You run into that dick fella. Who is he? Can he be trusted? I think he wanted a good guy. Well, you know, like us. Will he be all right with her coming? Praise the mother. He don't need to know about all that. Just, Just calm down. It ain't time yet. God, it hurts. As far as I can tell, the tech to calm seems to be solving problems, not causing them. Just be ready in case he starts anything. Detective Conby, good to see you again. Solved the case yet? I'm trying. Hey, Grace, you okay? Oh, she is just peachy, Detective. Are you looking forward to the Feast of St. John, Grace? I can't wait. Kids, ain't they great? What exactly are you planning for tonight? Oh, not much. We eat, we drink, we pay tribute to the wishing tree in the conservatory. The usual. Then why all the excitement? Is just something about tonight. Something is different. I think we all feel it. Besides, we got ourselves some new words for the prayer thanks to your buddy Jeremy. She'll come and turn the world inside out, and things will begin again. That sounds strangely threatening. You should come. <laughs> God damn it, Grace, stay put for once. It has to stop! I gotta make it stop! Where's that from? I did this. I wrote that. I know the combination. I carry it with me. How long have I been here? Looks like McCarthy has something hidden inside.
Why would McCarthy lock this up? Was he trying to keep Grace from completing the shank? If so, couldn't she have just made another drawing? What? Jeremy's never been here. That's me, isn't it? How long had it been since I drowned myself in drinking depression? It had all felt so peaceful, slipping away into oblivion. A welcoming dark voice wrapped around my mind like a heavy blanket. It turned off suddenly as I woke up from the sound of my office door closing shut. A messenger had left a telegram for Mrs. Saunders. She had a lead on where to find her husband and her kidnapped daughter. God, I used to drink so much back then. When was this? I think I need to figure out where I'm going first. I remember this case. Some kid got taken by her father, headed out of state, but he had made a mistake by selling a painting that his wife actually cared about to a collector named Thornhill to fund his venture. That's how I tracked him down. At least I think so. Thornhill wasn't a bad man, but he had principles keeping him from handing out information about the fields. So he needed some convincing. Well, every case can't be squeaky clean. Mr. Saunders had sold a valuable painting to Thornhill, hoping the money would carry him to wherever he was going. The painting, now leaning on an easel in Thornhill's bedroom, had a certain mesmerizing gloom that seemed to call out to me, telling me I was needed for something important. I felt myself falling into the paint, only being brought back by Thornhill, thrusting an address to a Hotel St. George into my hands and asking me to get the hell out. I don't remember this at all, but I can't say it didn't happen. Tell them what the game caught up with me. I owed them money, a lot of them. I can't remember what for. Probably some dumb gambling debt growing in size for each payment missed. I punched one of them out and I sent the others packing. It was a stupid move. They didn't pack. I had found him. In the hotel ledger, I recognized the handwriting and the signature. Ted Stryker. It was him. I could feel it. It was the kidnapper I was hunting. I put on my knuckles and hurried up to his room. Something about that name, Ted Stryker, rings a bell. It feels vaguely familiar. I recognize this room, but I didn't catch up with them here. I must have followed them, but where? That's right, he was running away, ditching his old life and marriage in New Orleans to find something better in Tallahassee. And he took his daughter with him against the will of the mother. That's why she hired me. But I stopped him. I caught up with him at the Pearl River Bridge. Pearl River. This is where I caught up with them. This is what the dark man wanted me to revisit. But I'm still not seeing it. What am I forgetting? I can't believe I didn't recognize you. I looked a little different back then, I suppose. Was any of this real? How do you mean? This day just... So much is happening. I can't... I think I've lost my head. 
Do you need me to apologize? I mean... I am sorry. I don't think I need to begin to explain. You, you're just a kid, Grace. I'm really sorry. I didn't mean for it to happen. Lies. More lies. No, really. I thought I was being a good guy by handing you over to your mother. I didn't know. I, I couldn't have known that she wouldn't care about you. I don't know how this works. What is this for? Some form of admission of guilt. Maybe acceptance. That's what the dark man wants. I guess we just watch my father die again then. You think he's alive? I know he is. He's down there, scared that he won't be able to get out. That he will drown with his daughter again. What are you saying? We gotta save him! We? Do it yourself! I'm down there with him, remember? Can I really save them? This all happened so long ago. I have to find a way to get down there. I have to see it with my own eyes. There was a boat at the house where I entered. If I can raise the bridge, I should be able to get to the car. here. Look at this mess! I, I, I'm sorry, Mrs. Thompson. Don't make me kick you out of this house. Now get out! Hey, Detective. Mr. Carnby. I'm really worried about you. I'm okay. I just need to catch my breath for a moment. This place? It's... There are some very disturbed figures around here, and I don't think it's just the patients. I've been reading some things about how Dorsetto has a deranging effect on people. I think it might explain... things. What? Just take it easy, okay? I'm gonna go find a way into Dr. Gray's apartment. I want to know what he's hiding. Emily, don't worry. I think I'm close. I'm gonna set everything right. Just be careful. Dr. Gray's office, all to myself. Let's see if we can figure this guy out. Ah! Jeremy? I need help! Wait, can you hear me? I'm stuck in the mud and the fire is taking Jeremy, me. where are you? The motor is dead. I can't do anything more. Hang on, Jeremy. I'll figure something out. I'll get the boat running. Whoa! <laughs> 
on our track. Are you ready to tell me what happened in the end? I put a rope around my neck, and then I strangled all the lights from my body. Are you under the impression that you died? Yes. No. I was supposed to die. What does that mean? That you were supposed to die. I'm the catalyst. I had to die to make the story end. What story? What are you referring to, Jerry? Thirty years ago, Frederick needed me to die. You're not making any sense, Jeremy. Come on, find hey. your focus. Hey! I cheated everyone. I didn't play my part. Hey! I escaped hey. my doom. My destiny. Again, find hey. your focus. Hey, I'm right here. What the hell is going on? Now, everything is wrong. Nothing is in play. Hey. I'm right here! Calm down, Mr. Conby. What do you want? Did... Were you... Were you not talking to Jeremy right now? I haven't seen Jeremy all day. Are you all right, Detective? No. Actually, actually, I don't... I don't think so. Well, maybe. I'm gonna go... look for Jeremy. Good. Let me know if you find him. Detective, am I glad to see you. Lock the door, will you? I don't think Dr. Gray would appreciate us sniffing around. What's going on here? This feels so strange. Have you found anything? What? Yeah, e yeah. uh, yeah, I've seen some... things. Okay, let me know if there is anything you want to talk about. You don't find this place... strange? Dorsetto is certainly one of the stranger places I've been to. This room feels too real, hyper real, more than anything I've ever experienced. Um, okay. I don't see what you mean. Forget it. I gotta get back to breaking the contract. Yeah, that's what I was doing. What did you do? I was just rearranging the books. Well, come on, let's check it out. I think I'm beginning to understand. Dr. Gray is dealing with some kind of mass delusion. What were you saying about mass delusion? Dorsetto seems to have a deranging effect on people living close by. It has a history of creating cults devoted to some nature goddess. Even the name Dorsetto refers to the cult existing here before the Civil War. Dorsetto was the name of an ancient fertility goddess worshipped in Syria. Dr. Gray and his friends, however, seem to prefer... the Black Goat of the Woods with a Thousand Young, or Shubnigroth. And that name can only have come from my uncle's twisted mind. You think all of them are in this cult business? Even Jeremy? I'm not sure any of them have a choice at this point. We just need to find a way to stop all of this. I've been so busy trying to free your uncle from the promise he made to the Dark Man. I guess I kind of just let everything else go. Don't worry, Detective. I feel like we're close. I'm sure Jeremy will turn up. If he is part of the cult, he wouldn't want to miss the Feast of St. John. I just need enough information to make him see the truth. I hope you're right, but I doubt he'll show up. Not as long as the Dark Man's got him hiding. Hello? Detective Convy? Who is this? Jeremy? Jeremy is with the Dark Man. You can't save him. Well, I've done everything he wanted so far, and there's just one more thing on the list. I expect him to keep his promise and return Jeremy unharmed. Get out, detective. While you still can.
You okay? You look a little frazzled. Just... stupid telephone. I know. I tried calling the police earlier. The telephone is completely dead. It's not... Yeah, no, the telephone isn't working. Miss Hartwood, I think you're gonna want to see this. Is there something in the closet? Yeah, there is. You don't see the very obvious gate leading to whatever Jeremy's madness is serving up next? I don't understand. Are you making some kind of fashion metaphor? I'm sorry, I don't have time for this. Can you just tell me what you're doing? You don't see this. It's fine. It's fine. Catch you later. Are you going inside the closet? Yeah. You got a problem with that? No. Do what you think is right, detective. Sorry, I didn't mean to. Goodbye, Miss Hartwood. Hey, you! What are you doing here? What is this place? Turn back, detective. You're not wanted here. Whoa, take it easy. I'm not your enemy. Oh, you're wrong, detective. You're wrong. Jeremy, or ah, maybe that is what you need to temper that mania of yours.
awake? You are awake. Mr. Conby's up. Hey, buddy. I thought you'd be knocked out for the rest of the night. <laughs> Come on out and join us, will you? I'll save you some gumbo. Good to have you back. You gave us all a good scare. What happened? You had a psychological breakdown. Sorry for manhandling you, but you are being violent. You stabbed Jeremy and then punched Dr. Gray. Are they... okay? Jeremy's a little strange, but everything's back to normal. Really? All thanks to you, combat. You want to try standing up? Well, if it isn't the hero of the day. How are you feeling, Detective? Never better. How about you two? Hey, Jeremy, I didn't do too much damage, did I? Things are fine. Very quiet. What's up with him? Painkillers? No. You see, despite you having the finesse of a one-eyed butcher, you managed to lobotomize, dear Jeremy. I did what? It's actually quite impressive. It's not like I hadn't considered it myself. I just wish Jeremy could have been helped without reducing his personality to that of an oyster. But he's gonna live. Of course. As long as someone keeps feeding him, he'll outlive the best of us. Does Emily know about Jeremy's condition? Yes. She seems to be handling it quite well under the circumstances. Does she still want to take Jeremy away from Dorsetto? I will have to insist that you do. This is not that kind of institution. Jeremy, hang on for a little longer, okay? We'll be going back to New Orleans soon. Oh, good. I do so miss the city lights. Hey, Ruth. Glad to see you made it back to Dorsetto. You too, detective. Make sure to stay for the festivities. It's no Mardi Gras, but it ain't bad. You seen Emily around? <laughs> I saw her packing some things into that old jalopy you arrived in about an hour ago. I'm sure she hasn't given up on you yet. Catch you later. <laughs> Looking forward to it, Detective. Good to see you back on your feet, Detective. Have some gumbo. Thanks. I'll save it for later. Seems like everyone's in a pretty good mood. The Eve of St. John is the most important date of the whole year. It's the only day when the black goat of the woods tends to her young. I'm gonna go look for Emily. Don't worry about her. She wouldn't leave without you, would she? What are you looking for? Just keeping an eye out for the storm. Radio says it could be a wild one. You don't know where Emily is, do you? She's packing some of Jeremy's things. Said she wanted to take him away. I'm sure she'll come and get you when she's ready. All right, tell me, what the hell's about to happen here? Every year we have a little turn-the-page ceremony by the tree. It's symbolical. Symbol... It's like life has its cycles of grief and happiness. You know? Just like a tree facing the seasons. Things change, but remain the same. So this is basically New Year's Eve, but with a tree metaphor. Exactly. You're so smart. It's about starting again. I mean, who could use a positive message like that more than a bunch of lunatics like us? I get the feeling some of you think this year is going to be special. Any idea why? Well, we got some new words, thanks to your buddy Jeremy. And some other changes to the program. Let's just say, we're all in this year. That is one impressive tree. More impressive than you could ever imagine. So how does this all work? You dance around chanting? 
For the ritual, I mean? Stay and find out, detective. It might just do you good. You haven't seen Emily, have you? No, detective. I haven't. Hey, kid. What are you up to? Preparing for the ceremony. I don't want to disappoint Mother. What's your part in this? I'm the Cabri San Corn. It's very important. Only I can settle our debt. You know, I had my doubts, but you are in the right place, Grace. I think you might be right. For once. Everyone knows what to do? Y'all know the new words. Mrs. Thompson, we talked about this. I'm not sure everyone is comfortable. Doctor, I insist. This is important. We've waited for so long, Doctor. Let's just go with the old song. Not every change is an improvement. Boss, good or bad, we need to move forward. All in, Doc. Let's bet it all. But we don't know what we're dealing with. It'll be okay, Doctor. Better even. Ever their praises in abundance to the black goat of the woods. Hear us, brother. Take pity on us. Take pity on us. Ever their praises in abundance to the black goat of the woods. Hear us, brother. And take pity on us. Hear us, brother. And take pity on us. Hear us, brother. And take pity on us. Take pity on us. Are you crazy? Yes, yes, please, the hammer comes with Grace, stop! I can't let that monster leave Dorsetto. I have to stop it.
techno. Oh, what the hell was that? I tried to tell you. There was so much evidence. Their devotion to the black goat was like nothing I've ever seen before. I felt so dumb believing any of it, but I'm glad I did. Are you okay? Everything is out of order. This isn't the way the story goes. I shouldn't be alive. Yeah. Oh, you're welcome, buddy. How are you doing, sweetie? I kinda like it. You ruined everything, but I'm not mad. Are you ready to head back to New Orleans? Come on, Jeremy. We're leaving. Can I come? I thought you said you didn't need saving. Don't leave her. She's important. Of course we're taking her with us.